oh yeah, extreme fucking metal. There are hundreds and thousands of extreme metal bands out there producing probably millions of songs over the decades that the extreme metal genres, I mean, there's multiple genres, there's dozens of genres of extreme metal, but out of all that shit, out of all the extreme metal out there, there are five songs that I hold in the highest regard. Not even all of these, in fact, most of these are not from bands that I am really a fan of. About four of these are from bands who have just a couple of songs that really stick to me. And honestly, I'm really picky when it comes to extreme metal music. I want my extreme metal to be pummeling, to be loud, audacious, dense with noise, and just to fucking steamroll me for the entire length of the song. That's what I'm looking for, and that's what you're going to get out of these five tracks. Now, I've put these in a playlist. It's going to be linked in the description. It's the just just five tracks. Tracks, man, you just gotta listen to these five tracks. If you don't know anything about extreme metal, if you've never listened to extreme metal, these might be a little harsh for you. However, there's no better crash course into the genre than just to fucking dive in. What should you expect? Just harsh, pummeling, loud, intense music that's meant to get you fucking going. All right, at number five, I have. A Scream to Express the Hate of a Race by the band Mirror Throne. Mirror Throne was a very short-lived black metal one-person outfit from, I believe, France. And they only had a couple of albums before just sort of disappearing, probably because they weren't very successful. And the first track on the album Carriers of Dust is this one, my personal favorite. It is nine and a half minutes of blistering fucking chaos. This is a symphonic black metal outfit. However, most of the music is synthetic, and obviously so. These are not live drums. You can tell, not only because they don't sound like live drums, but because there's like five or six tracks of them sometimes going at the same time. What makes Mirror Throne noteworthy is just the audacity audaciousness of the music, that he would multi-track blast beat drums, that he would just throw in like layers and layers of violin sounds and keyboards and vocals, different kinds of vocals layered on top of each other. It is maddening how much detail is in this song, and yet somehow all of it holds together and creates this anthemic beast of a track that's literally about wishing everyone on Earth was dead. The race that it is screaming about the hate of is in fact the human race. This has been confirmed by the artist in case anybody's wary about a song with a title like this. But this track just bellows along, going through passages of extreme intensity. I mean, the the lower intensity moments in this song are more intense than, like, other metal songs are, but they're a brief respite before it pulls you back into just constant blast beats going back and forth between different kinds of intense drum noise while this guy screams at you in some pretty great black metal vocals. The song's kind of broken in half by a 20 five or so second interlude in the middle where it goes completely a cappella and it just sings this really haunting vocal in some fairly broken English that really sticks with you. There's some vivid imagery in this song and just the sheer anger of it while he's screaming, a scream to express the hate of a race that lost itself. It's fucking, it's fucking grim and edgy as fuck and I absolutely Love it. This is probably the most intense song out of these five, although they're all pretty fucking intense. So, moving on from that one, my number four is The Space for This by the band Cynic, in a very different direction from Mirror Throne, whereas Mirror Throne has some pretty shit production and just layers and layers of chaotic instrumentation. Granted, that comes together really well, Cynic is all about being tight and precise. This is a progressive metal outfit who use just their incredible technical ability to have melodies that noodle through each other and syncopate in odd ways with the drums. This song is extreme technical perfection. It starts off with about a minute and a half of a very 
soft and spacey uh, guitar interlude that's extremely clean, and you might not even think you're listening to a metal song at first. It just seems so pristine and nice until it kicks into the fucking and then everybody goes crazy. This has some of the tightest drumming you will ever fucking hear on a metal album. The constant double bass is just interwoven with all these crazy drum fills and shit, and like... You just, you can't rest. Like, when the drums seems like it's taking a break, it's actually just building over here so it can sweep across and hit you with some heavy shit again. Meanwhile, the guitars are going fucking ape shit. It's crazy that this song is constantly, constantly pummeling in not only the chorus, but also the verses. And, like, it just, like, gets heavier and less heavy, but never not maximum it's like it's like going 90 and then 100 and then 90 and 100 and then 90 and 100 all the way through you know like this is a song whose quieter moment is still like this weird ripping reversed sounding guitar part I don't know how to describe it. And all of it's very sci-fi themed. They're talking about the space for this, being in the captain's chair, and all this other shit. Like, Cynic's lyrics are always about space exploration and stuff. So, it's got this thick sci-fi feel. It, I mean, it feels like you're fucking flying a spaceship through a supernova. That's the general atmosphere of this track. And again, it's so technical and so tight. Like... It's almost the opposite of what you would usually consider the spirit of metal, of, like, chaos and discordance. However, it never loses, like, a fun edge, whereas so much of progressive metal seems, like, wanky to me, where they're just like, look at the fucking time signatures I can do, and look at my crazy guitar solo skills. Like, this doesn't feel that way. They're using this technical mastery to craft something that just wants to beat you over the head and have you fucking headbang and go like this in your car, you know? <laughs> this is a fun driving song. It is not some, like, wanky bullshit, which some Cynic songs are. Some of their songs can go a little bit in that direction, but I think in general, they're one of the more grounded progressive metal bands, which is really what I like about them. Following that up is the heaviest song in the goddamn universe. The song Too Serious by Gojira. That's Too Serious the, you know, solar system. Because this is a song about going from Mars to Sirius. Uh, it's also about dolphins and whales in outer space. And like a war between the dolphins and humans. You know, the usual stuff. Gojira is one of the few bands out there who truly lives up to their name because they have the most massive, aquatic, stomping, deep, guttural, bassy sound of any fucking band out there. And that is best exemplified in this song. The riffs in this song... It sounds like fucking what Godzilla would actually listen to, like, if not the sounds he's making as he stomps across the ocean floor. The opening riff just rips your skull right open from the beginning, and it's got this constant, like, change in, I don't know if it's a different time signature, but it keeps going between these two different, like, uh, times. Um, at least, like, two different lengths of the riff. It's really interesting. You'll know what I mean if you listen to it. Um, then there's, like, this groovy sort of part where that's kind of like a chorus that will it cuts between the groove and the jagged time signatures until it gets into the midsection, and then it just hits you with the most heavy fucking... I highly recommend watching the music video for this song because it communicates the sensation of heaviness very well when there's a part where the uh, the sort of main character of the video is like sort of headbanging but it's done with like after images and like a slow motion effect and it just looks like headbanging harder than a human actually can and that's how I feel when I get to this part of the song but what really really brings this one home for me is the ending riff after the big heavy section that tears your fucking soul in half then it goes into this and it's my favorite heavy metal riff ever and thankfully it plays for like two minutes at the end of the song as it slow fades out with these huge like soaring screams over the top of the song 
it's really cool. Um, I always think of how the singer of Gojira has talked about the fact that when they're playing shows, he just imagines whales flying over the audience. Well, and that's 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 what I picture when I listen to the song. I just think about whales in space. That's that's what, that's literally what the lyrics are about. He talks about dolphins in outer space in the lyrics of the song. Next up is my favorite song by actually one of my longtime favorite bands, probably in my top five extreme metal bands, which is Mastodon with their song Crystal Fucking Skull from the album Blood Mountain. Mastodon is known for their like intense technical riffs that they just bust out that sound super fucking badass and they kind of string together a bunch of cool sounding riffs to make a song. Crystal Skull is the most blistering of their songs that just charges through a bunch of riffs in no time flat. It's like three minutes long. It starts off with this like this long intro of just like just uh, tribal drums in the distance somewhere. Like they sound like they're far off and you can just feel it coming. You feel you feel the fucking <laughs> the thing approaching you and you just every time I listen to this intro I, I go Crystal Skull! And then the guitars come in. I'm just gonna do an acapella cover of the song at the end of this video. I'm just, that's just gonna happen. It just goes and goes. Like the part where you would expect things to slow down, they just get heavier. And then you get Scott Kelly from Neurosis, who makes a guest appearance on every uh, Mastodon album. And he starts having these big, loud, epic screams. And then it just charges into a huge fucking guitar solo. And man, if you know Mastodon, you know they got the fucking guitar solos. And this is one of their best. It It's just a tight package of a song. You know, if songs like A Scream to Hate a... If songs like A Scream to Express the Hate of a Race and the one that I'm about to talk about can really explore the breadth of metal as like this giant operatic adventure where it can take you through all these different moving parts and sort of indulge in all this madness, Crystal Skull is all about just getting the raw, intense feeling of metal as fast as possible. It's just an injection right into the vein. You just want to fucking throttle yourself to this song. But of course... My number one favorite extreme metal song, the one closest to my heart, is Blind Guardians, and then there was silence. This is a power metal track that just goes so far beyond the impossible on its level of ambition and scale. This song is like the end of power metal to me. This is like, we, we made it. There's nowhere to go from here. Because it's literally a musical adaptation of the Iliad that goes for over 14 minutes. It tells like the whole story of the Iliad. And it's just constantly moving between all these different parts parts and sections and bits and they all flow into each other perfectly occasionally reaching these giant chorus sections there's like a there's a huge chorus on this song that appears three times and it's so gratifying when it happens because it feels like you've like finished a chapter of this book that is this song like it really is like a cinematic experience you're going through like this whole story as opposed to like one song it's really like you know, an odyssey, or an Iliad, if you will. <laughs> Blind Guardian's sound on the album that this came out on, A Night at the Opera, is, while somewhat hamstrung by the fact that the album has really shit production, and when they later, like, remastered a bunch of it, they did so by, like, remaking the songs, and they don't have the same energy as the originals, but the sound that they were going for on this is they wanted to create the sound of an army of musicians. So there's just ass loads of multi-tracking like all the guitars have like five or six tracks all the vocals have like five or six tracks it sounds like there's an entire chorus singing each of these songs even though it's actually just the lead singer like doing a bunch of different voices at the same time but like it feels so immense all the time even the soft parts of the song there's still a chorus singing them so you know you get this feeling of like being in the audience of a Greek play or something. It's truly like the definition of epic, as epic as a song could possibly be. And yes, there are songs out there that are much longer and go through much more different moving parts. But what's crazy about it, and then there was silence is that there's just no stopping it. It's not a song that like 
comes to a pause and you feel like a new song has started. Like, lots of 14-minute metal songs are, are really just, like, a few songs strung together. This is one cohesive piece of music. It all feels like it naturally flows and tells one story, even when it breaks into, like, a folk jam in the middle of the, of the song, like a folk pop thing as, as characters are dancing around because they think the war's over because they pulled in the Trojan horse. And then the Trojans come out and fucking blood shut all over the place and we will be started forever. Yeah, you know, it's that kind of song. It has a long trailing outro. It just goes, again, it's like the end of, like, of fucking power metal. Like, there's nowhere to go from there. It just covers all the bases. It does everything you could possibly do. So... Yeah, that's why it's my favorite, not only my favorite power metal song, but my favorite extreme metal song. Really, all five of these are pretty closely tied, though. I mean, they're all, like, you know, they're all from completely different genres, so it's not like one of them necessarily competes with the other, but, like, all five are just my favorites. So that's that. Go check out the playlist that I will put in the description, and here's maybe an acapella cover of Crystal Skull. One million boys Ding 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 